Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Peace and love everybody. I'm Brother Ali. This is the Traveler's Podcast. The guest that we have this week is somebody that's really, really influential and important to me and to underground independent hip hop in the time that I came out. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with Run the Jewels, which is LP and Killer Mike. And what part of what I think is so dope about that combination of those two guys is that uh, you have this kind of juxtaposition of LP, who is a tough Jewish kid that grew up in Red Hook, Brooklyn, and was really deeply immersed in hip hop music and culture and brought his own flavor to it. He brought his own truth to it. He brought his own sound to it. You know what I'm saying? And he was able to to work with Killer Mike, who's coming from, you know, Atlanta. And the juxtaposition of those two things, you know, Killer Mike bringing this kind of like Southern, soulful, gospel, civil rights, revolutionary, entrepreneurial thing, you know, all of those things to the table. That balance and that juxtaposition of those two, it reveals a lot about each other because LP is really pointing at what a genius Killer Mike is. And you have this big black man in Killer Mike that if you hear him talk, like once you once he gets the chance to say something to you, then you're going to know what an amazing universe is inside this human being. And then uh, but but if you just look at the picture, if, a, if, if America, if mainstream America just looks at the picture, you might not get all of that. If you just hear the records that he did with Outkast, for example, it's all in there, but not everybody might get all of that. And something about the presence of LP and his kind of uh, avant-garde style production is casting a, a light on that that's helpful. And then also Killer Mike being there with LP is also revealing how soulful LP is, how funky LP is, how hip hop LP is, how human LP is. Like this is not, you know, if you just were to look at the pictures of these two guys, you'd look at LP and you might not think that he's funky and soulful. And you might look at, at, at Killer Mike if you just look through the lens of, of the limited lens of the stereotypes that we live with, you might not understand how nuanced and deep and, and rich Killer Mike is intellectually. And, you know, and so there's something about that. But LP has been doing this a very similar kind of formula for a minute. And one of the things that happened in the late 90s, early 2000s is this genius, genius group, Cannibal Ox. That was my man Vast Air and Vortal, and then their DJ Sip. But when they connected with, and, and amazing, amazing work that they did before that, amazing work they've done since then. And it's incredible. And LP has a whole catalog, you know, that we mentioned, and it's all incredible. But I'm telling you, my personal favorite, one of my favorite albums of any genre that's been made is the Cannibal Ox album called Cold Vein. Um, and it was the first time that these kind of concepts had come together like that, like this. And you, you'll hear me tell Vass, but in the late 90s, early 2000, in 2001, in that summer, uh, the Cold Vein album came out by Cannibal Ox and then Jay-Z, The Blueprint came out. And those two albums were happening right as I was starting to get a glimpse that I might actually be able to contribute to the culture and I might actually be able to have a voice. And so I carry those into the creation of my first album and then we toured together and you'll hear us talk about all of that. So when you hear Vast Air, you're hearing a true great poet a, and the type of poet that really inspires me, you know? And what you also hear is the type of mind and heart and spirit and soul and just the type of being that formed me. Um, so vast area, you know, that we always talk about that there's a bunch of different expressions of spirituality and even within the world of kind of inner city black American Islam, it's a family and it's a spectrum. And, you know, vast area is, is uh, somebody who is identified with um, the nation of gods and earth, the five percent, the five percenters, which is one of the expressions of uh, that family, you know. And so, 
a lot of what you're going to hear is the, are the types of conversations that, and we call it a build, but the type of build that happens between us, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm really happy to share this. I'm just going to tell you off top, I say, I've said this before, but with some of this, with a lot of these, I do my research and my homework and I go in wanting to ask questions in this really kind of linear way. But I tend to, I try, I'm learning, I would say, how to feel out the conversation and the guest and like, should I do this linear thing or do they have something that they want to share? You know what I'm saying? Are they bringing a vibe to this thing that let's just, that, that can I match this energy and can we just surf on this vibe for a minute? And so, you know, with Amir Suleiman, one of my dearest friends and my favorite poet, and I think is the greatest poet, you know, I, I didn't ask him linear questions. And so I know BK1 was like, man, I've, I'm curious. I want to know uh, Amir Suleiman's backstory. Like, I want to know how he became Amir Suleiman. I want to hear those foundational questions. And so I just have to tell you, if you're coming to this thinking that you're going to learn, because a lot of that stuff with Vastair, I don't even know. Even as somebody, like I've been friends with him for 20 some years, and I don't know the answers to a lot of these questions. So I was genuinely curious to ask him. So inshallah, we'll have him back. But what you are going to hear is an expression of timeless truth and how it interacts with the lives that we live, with our spiritual selves. This is the kind of conversation, this is one of the kinds of conversations that when we started this podcast, I wanted to be able to share, and so I'm very grateful for it. Uh, we're brought to you, as always, by the Zakat Foundation, Zakat, Z-A-K-A-T. That's how Muslims do charity and give back, one of the many ways. Uh, but it, it's something that people have as a universal reality that we should give back. We've been given and we feel gratitude and whether we have a little or a lot isn't what's important. What's important is that we've been given and we've been able to build something and so we want to share it. And if you go to Zakat Foundation, whether it's Z-A-K-A-T-U-S on social media, Zakat U-S or Zakat.org, you'll be able to check out all of these really dope things that they do all over the world. It's a Muslim-led organization, but they don't use their work to try to convert people. They don't only help Muslims. So it's a good place to donate. It's a good way to give back. And these are people that I've known and that I've worked with, and I have a level of trust with them that I don't have with other kind of corporation-feeling global humanitarian organizations. I have a level of trust with them. Uh, partially because of the fact that they are so engaged in art and culture in a sincere way. They don't ask us for our numbers. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're, they, they're not mad. Like, so, you know, if I interview somebody with a huge platform and then we get 12 times the, the streams that we normally get, and then the next week we interview somebody that I know and love, but the world doesn't necessarily know them like that, and we may get a fraction of the streams that we normally get. Zakat Foundation isn't trying at all to influence who we talk to, what we talk to them about. They're just like, yo, if we're really going to make change in the world, culture has to really be at the heart of it. So you have these cultural conversations. We're going to support you on a certain level. So we're very grateful and uh, really hope you enjoy this episode of the Travelers Podcast with my man, Fast Air. One of the main conversations, especially since the pandemic, and then definitely with me moving to Turkey, but like almost everybody I see and talk to is trying to figure out when's the last time that we actually saw each other. And I can't even, I'm trying to remember when's the last time I actually put my arms around Vast Air. Oh, <laughs> it's been man. years, man. It's been a long time. I know that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, I can't even, it's 2023. So, oh, <laughs> I have no idea, brother, to be real. I do know that the first ever, like the first tour tour that I did, like the whole country was with Atmosphere. But before that, the first run that I did of shows where I left Minneapolis and did like a run of shows was with Idea and Abilities, Mr. Liff. I think Aesop was supposed to be on that tour, but he wasn't. And y'all, yes, like I was, I was, I was opening for all of y'all, yeah. And it was yeah. a, a day or two after nine eleven, after September eleventh, and that was a extremely like formative period for everybody, but for me, because 
the two albums that were playing for me at that time, the most two influential albums that inspired, especially my first album, was The Blueprint, the Jay-Z Blueprint that came out on 9-11, and Cold Vein. And when I think about even especially when I go listen to the first song that I made with Ant, this song called Room With A View, it's a blueprint beat and... It's a vast air rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> like the way that I'm rhyming, the thi- well, like I, I didn't really, you know how you don't realize it when you're being inspired that much by somebody. But when I go back and listen to it, the things I'm saying, I can almost hear them in your voice it, on, on that song. <laughs> I can almost hear, we don't have bar mitzvahs. <laughs> we become men the first time our father hits us and we don't open gifts up. I, <laughs> like I can hear those rhymes. And, like there, it's my life, it's my story, but I can almost hear that nah. in your in your voice, man. Nah, that's so true. And much respect because as a creator, we all know that we've been inspired by somebody. Right. And that inspir and that inspiration has kept us up and made it forced us to like make a better song. So that's much respect. And I've y'all, you know, all of y'all, especially Brother Ali, you know, everybody from Ron Singers that I respect, y'all have always inspired us. So it's like, you know, much respect. Also, you brought up idea that was my homie. Yeah. And uh we we used to get real philosophical on MCing. Yes. And what it is. Like me and him ate many plates of food discussing the science of being an MC. So for you to bring up that time, it's just hitting me hard. Like wow. Yeah, that was a powerful. That was a powerful moment. And then like whenever you have those, so it's like the combination of a big moment in the world. So like September 11th is a big moment for the world, and especially for America, and especially for New York. You know what I mean? But then also in in my life, like the moments of my life, but then also all of us were, were just starting to realize that we actually were about to live our dream. And, and, That's right. And we, so we're sharing like these, these collective moments as artists and as like hip hop lovers, because we're still fans, you know what I'm saying? Like we're still fans of hip hop. Like we're still bugging off the new joints that are coming out. And like, yo, we get on stage every night. Like now we, we're we part of this. We're like what is, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? So like when you have those moments with nah, somebody, so true. even if we don't see each other, like we could not see each other for 30 years. And, but the, the fact that like part of who I am is based on moments that we shared together. So we'll always be a part of each other. Like oh, we'll always yeah. be a part of each other's hearts and lives, man. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, you know, there's, you know, something might happen and you know, it'll make me reflect and re- it'll, 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 it will remind me of when we were all together. It could have been a moment of us eating. It could have been us just walking around a neighborhood and we were talking and we were building, but something to happen and it'll go, oh, it reminds me of this on tour or this time when we was recording. Or So that's always a beautiful thing. And like you said, uh, memory is very important mm-hmm. uh, for the human, you know, especially for the human experience. Memory is such an important, uh, you know, attribute of you know of what we have Mm -hmm. so that's what makes dementia and alzheimer's and things like that it makes that a real serious matter because people are literally losing gaps of their life like you have to remind yourself that that's your daughter in the corner you know what i mean so um so our memories are that precious it's a moment in time and um and sometimes our memories can uh cause trauma so sometimes you gotta know which ones to let go of and which ones to embrace Mm. so i'm honored i'm honored that you embraced me in some of your memories because i've embraced all of y'all man just you know 
just like you said, we were at that horizon of we're a fan, but we're about to experience it on a global level. Right. And and as peers, I respect that. And I'm glad that I have a couple of people to look back with and go, yo, remember when our songs started to take off? Right. You know what I mean? Because it, at that point, we, we're just being realistic. You don't know where it's going to go. But we put our music out there and someone responded to it. Right. And that's by the graces. You know, that's by the graces of the almighty. And I know that the greatest part of me is, is, is shining from somewhere other than me. So I just, I'm paying it forward. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And it's a trip that, you know, that we all have these different entrance points and that we become entrance points for other people. You know what I mean? So the same way that we were inspired and, and the way that we felt about Rakim and the way that we still feel, you know, about the, whoever it was that like turned the light on for us. It was like, oh, yeah, I've been dancing to this or whatever. And then suddenly whoever like, you know, Rakim or Chuck D or, or KRS or Latifa, somebody says something that's like, wait a minute. I'm a different person now. Like not only not only am I rocking <laughs> to this music, but I'm not the same person I was before Rakim said that line. Like I'm a different me now because of what he said. And then for somebody else in the world to have that experience, like I, I know that like most of us, like we don't have Grammys, but I know you've looked at your words tattooed on somebody's body. Like I know that that's happened. You know what I mean? And so there's somebody who's like, they wanted to show, and and like, I don't have any tattoos, but I see my face tattooed on people. I see my words tattooed on people. And I know that's what they're indicating. It's like, they heard something from this vessel that made them feel like, oh, I'm not the same me anymore, or I'm more me than I was before because of the reflection that I got from that person. So to come into it like that. Exactly. And then also I'm thinking about, so like my first tour was opening for you and I was looking at you because, you know, in underground independent scene, I didn't always identify directly with everything. I respected it all and I felt I could see the artistry in it. I respected the work ethic of it. I respected these people could come off the head that they and they would fight. They would scrap if they needed to. And like I respected these people, but I didn't always identify musically with everything. And so that cold, that cold vein album, I was like, this, this is hip hop music. It's new and it's creative. <laughs> and it's like, but this is like an extension of Wu-Tang and this is an extension of the things that I love most. So opening for you and was like, and for you to look at me and be like, oh, word, yeah, yeah, grab the mic, get on the stage. Yeah, let's 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 get in the cipher. Let's go battle these these clowns that think that they that came to the show to, to, to try to get down. Let's go serve them. Let's see. He was like, oh. But then I think about the fact that when me and you went on tour a couple years later, Immortal Technique opened for us, and that was his first tour. That's, yes. te that's Technique's. That's yes. Immortal Technique's first tour. And how many people got Immortal Technique's yes. tattooed, his lyrics tattooed on their body and play it when their children are born, and they'll be playing Technique at, at, their, at their funeral, you know? It's so wild, man, like the way you know, that we're all invited to this thing. Yeah, um, like what you said earlier about when an MC said something and it changed you. Right. Like I could I could go off the head with how many times that happened. Mm. And that's the influence and the power of this thing that is half a century. It's half half a century. Mm -hmm. And I'm just on it that I did something in that quick amount of time where someone has engraved me into them. You know what I mean? This is this is beyond time. Right. So I have an I have enough time to put it on me. But when something is 50 years old, 
and then let alone you're within that 50. Yeah. So whatever you did is, is smaller than that. So for someone to have my logo or my name or that's a symbol that we were here. Right. Like you can't, you can never deny that Nas was here. You can't deny that Jay Z was here. You can't deny that Rakim said Planet Earth was my place of birth. It's so Born crazy. to be the sole controller of the universe. When he said that, Oof, I got, I have chills, man. I, like something just flew up my back. Yes. And that's not even, and that's just me repeating it. So how did it feel when I actually heard that? Oof. Oof. Like I'm a grown man <sighs> and chills are going up my spine yes. when I repeat certain MCs. Yeah. So I'm just paying homage. I'm just paying. It's a culture that I'm a part of. And I'm just paying homage. I'm paying it back. And when you was coming on tour with me, you, you was a you was a brother of mine. Right. You was brother Ali, but but you was a brother. I already respected y'all as peers and what y'all did out out in, in Twin City. Mm. You know what I mean? I already, you know, I, I understood the importance of First Avenue. Right. So so the fact that y'all was coming on tour with us, if anyone's coming on tour with us, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. You know what I mean? So um, there was a respect and an honor for other peers y'all were my peers y'all inspired us mm -hmm. so you know you know we want we want just listening to new york we was listening to everybody it's a culture we was listening to la we was listening to the midwest we was listening to the south and we was all the way in new york so when brothers ask me who was I listening to, and I say psychodrama, it throws people off. Right. They not expecting, they're not expecting a New Yorker to say, we was listening to psychodrama. Right. We was listening to, we, we knew, we knew who Underground Kings was when Big Pippin dropped. Mm -hmm. You see? So, you know, um, that's another thing I always love canceling. Hip hop is hip hop. I don't play that, you know, mainstream, underground, you know, I don't play. There's just awareness. Right. You either know you either know about us or you don't. If my song was in belly, you would know who I am. Right. But my song's not on Belly. It's on Tony Hawk's video game. That's right. <laughs> yo, that used to be, yo, for us in those days, man, to get on that Tony Hawk game was like, yo, we made it. <laughs> that was the biggest platform we were about to be on. If you if you made it to a Madden, who could say anything to you? Bro, I, I'm on a Madden game. So so I'm on Madden. So I'm, we made a song where I sampled Rakim at the beginning of the song, or Ant just cut it in. I came in the door in 1984, and he cut in, if I came in the door that song got on madden and i was on tour with rakim when it happened and rakim used to be a quarterback like rakim is a is a football player and he's a gamer he's a yes. serious gamer and so he can't he he somehow got an early version of the game and so he brought me in the back of his bus he's like yo ali he's like come back here man and he turned on it and he's like this is your song sampling my voice in this game and then we sat there and played Madden. <laughs> like, that is know. surreal. Yeah, man. That is, that is, now I have 20 stories like that. Of course. Exactly. And, and they're, and they're timeless. Right. They're like, 
you just sit there like, did that really happen? <laughs> like, yeah. I was on tour. Um, I was on tour with Carnage, uh, the artist that I did Mighty Joseph with, and Sip from Can Ox. Mm -hmm. And we're touring around. I think we were doing uh, South by Southwest. It was South by Southwest. And we walked into a Denny's. We hungry, trying to get something to eat. Mm -hmm. Word is born to God. A bunch of tables are lined up. A bunch of musicians. And Little Richard is at the head of the table. <laughs> and he says, y'all come. Y'all come over here. Little Richard is singling me to come eat with him. We've been in the restaurant for 30 seconds. Like, we just walked in. Right. We're, you know, so we're waiting on the woman to come up right, right. and see us. Little Richard is like, no, 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 no. Y'all come sit with us. I looked. I looked at Sip. I said, Sip, that's Little Richard. We started, we start crying, <laughs> laughing. Like, we like what the like, like we came in here to get French toast. Right, right. And we're literally sitting with the man that created rock and roll. Right. Yeah, man. Him and his buddies right. made rock and roll. Yes. So like rest in peace um little richard rest in peace he saw my aura yes that's he right. knew yes we we walked in and he read us yes. and was like y'all come eat over here and how are we gonna tell little richard no mm -hmm. so we are that was the longest lunch of my life it was like three hours uh, he told us so many stories from the past. He told us how um, he inspired Andre 3000 to do Hey Ya. That's beautiful. You know, that's beautiful. You mentioned uh, when I was talking about it's 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 really deep. It's that that A light connection is so powerful. You know what I mean? Like when we recognize e ourselves in each other. Um, cause I, when I brought up lyrics that change us forever, and then you mentioned planet earth is my place of birth, that song together oh. to me, it's that song. I just got chills all over again. Cause to me, it's, it's a, the same song, but the second verse, when he says, you know, he's talking about thinking how hard it was to be born, me being cream with no physical form. We, so, so he basically tells a story of being a sperm and finding the egg. And then also he is like doing transcendental meditation where he travels throughout history and he visits Europeans in caves and he's like, oh, they ha that that's the worst that life has ever been. I'm glad I I'd rather be here to exercise the mind. So like these people are imprisoning us now. These people enslaved us. These people make ghettos for us to live in, but they're limited in their mind. And so they're actually the ones that I'm feeling sorry for them. And then he goes to Mecca and Medina and the pyramids and all this <laughs> stuff and then comes back and says, you know, all of that, it ain't where you're from, it's, it's where, where you're at. at. To me, that's like, I mean, that informs my whole spiritual journey, that informs the way I see art, That's the that's, that informs my relationship with my body and with community and with art. And that type of writing, that's what I saw in you. The fact that you were so like very rooted and very like very real hood experiences, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you step to the next stencil, you know what I'm saying? What you think? That chalky outline on the ground is a father figure? So he moves to the next is stencil. A father the, figure? Yeah, next and then stencil. the next stencil, the father figure thing, and like a stencil of like a drawing. And then the next stencil is a hustler infested with money and diamond cluster. It's like you have these archetypes. You know what I'm saying? So like an archetype of seeing a thing on the ground where like a, a what do they call that when they when they outline the body in chalk? And you're saying, so like, this is what I'm seeing, like this representation of, you know, his father, killed and his, murdered and, you, and like that's know. father. But then also that thing can come off and become an archetype for fathers that we look for, the people that we gravitate towards. 
it's that thing of like being so rooted in the visceral, like physical experience of living in a ghetto every day, but then also <laughs> the the transcendental at the same time being like a citizen of the entire universe and connected to God and like, it's that. So that's what I heard. It, that's what I heard in you. <laughs> no, no, respect, respect. And you know, that's what we heard in you. That's what we heard in Slug. So you see, there's, I mean, how can I put this? There's like a relative rat line. Mm -hmm. It makes us all laugh. Mm -hmm. It makes us all smile. It was creating. It landed on time. Whatever. But then there's those lines that come with those chills. Right. And, and it has to be experienced. I could give you a phone book about caramel. Oh, it's gooey. Oh, it's sweet. Oh, it's this, it's that. Until you taste caramel, you're not going to be there. Okay? So this is how you should look at any experience. Until you experience it, you're peddling someone else's story. Mm, 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 okay? Mm. So you're being... You know, I don't want to say you're a liar, but I'd rather say that you have faith in someone else's story. You know, it's it's deep, and and that's the that's also the connection with spiritual masters. Like you can you can study the scripture and and all of that, but until you've tasted what it is to actually be in pain and feel God, or to be to have a dream and feel God, or to have a you know until you have that tasting. It's like, man, you're you're just Un you're peddling until, somebody else's until, story. Go ahead, man. <laughs> come on, man. I mean, what else are you doing? Right. Yeah. If your grandmother said X Y Z, I went to church and X Y Z, and then you <laughs> go to church <laughs> and you don't feel that. Right. You don't even feel A B C. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right. So. If you go to church and you don't realize, you know, what your grandmother did, ultimately, you're going to be looking for that experience. Mm -hmm. You're going to just constantly be looking for that experience. Yeah. Because your grandmother felt something. Mm -hmm. And that's her experience. And that's okay. But we need. Uh, we need to have a personal experience with caramel, you know, uh, with chocolate ice cream, whatever it is, with hip hop. You need to have your own personal experience, and then you're going to get those chills mm -hmm. that respond. Mm -hmm. And it amazes us that we could just bring the songs back up. But it mentally puts us right back there, and the chills come back right. because of the truth. Because of the truth of the paragraph. Yeah. That person, that person, that artist that is being the agent of the divine at that moment mm -hmm. to get across whatever. Like you said, you said many names. We're emphasizing Rakim. It could be Biggie. It could be Tupac. Um, you know, it could be Nas. It could be Wu Tang. Uh, you know, it could be NWA. At that moment, they were channeling for us, and that's why, to this day, that music is eternal. Yeah, and that's why the truth of Scripture is eternal. So you can read something that's two, five, ten thousand years old and it'll, it'll break you. And you're a human being in this time and place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you're reading something, it just, it unifies the human experience. You know, when a mother lost a child 5,000 years ago, 
you think it was different than last week? Mm. That pain is eternal. It, it stretches through. So the mother from back then is identified with the mother in Boys in the Hood. Yeah. It's the same, it's the same pain. Yeah. So if I say something true, bless. If Rakim says something true, it's a blessing. We're channeling it mm-hmm. from the from the ultimate truth. So that's what's the bless, you know? And and it really requires a type of uh ego death to be able to do that. I mean, first of all, to be able to acknowledge that we have an experience like that, whether it's pain or whether it's the the death of learning, like we learn something new, the old us is no longer alive like that or or is changed. And that because like we change and grow with the things that we learn, whether they're through pain or through some other kind of way, you know what I mean? So we're no longer that person that we used to be. So there's like some death in learning that. And then also being able to channel it and put it on a page or in a sculpture or in music or in fashion or how, however we express it, like that takes a lot too. And and to share that with other people is like, you don't know if that's going to be accepted you, I mean, n- never mind celebrate it or, or like recognize for what it actually is. You know what I'm saying? You have no, you have no idea. You're in the dark. Right. You just believe. Right. You have faith. Yeah. You believe in yourself. Yeah. Or it's never going to happen. Right. You'll get to it tomorrow, but tomorrow never comes. Yeah. Tomorrow never comes. There's now. Yesterday is gone. When me and Ali were in a van getting mad philosophical, that's gone. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. But right now, we're right here, zeroed in, right right where we were in that tour van. Yeah. It's right here again. The Travis Podcast is really sponsored by the people that are part of the caravan. If you go to brotherali.com, you can go to the merch section and there's actually uh, t-shirts and and hoodies and music and all kind of stuff there. And uh, there's a really dope, like the design for this podcast is a stamp that was done by my man Mark from Medina Hip Hop who heard Chuck D say, most of my heroes don't appear on no stamp. And so he actually created a stamp with Chuck D on it. Chuck D loved it. And so he started doing a whole line. So there's a Biz Marquis stamp, a Lauren Hill stamp, an MF Doom stamp. They're all incredible. And he honored me by doing a stamp of me. And that's what we use because also, you know, this is the Travelers podcast and et cetera. So you can go and you see we do gem tones. I love gem stones and gem tones. So you'll see we got a ruby joint. We got a, you know, all, all the different colors and I love them. So go to brotherally.com in the merch section. You can check that out. If you go to the event section, you'll see the tours that we have coming up, the live events. I'm doing a tour starting in late November. Uh, The Grouch, my man, The Grouch from Living Legends is bringing back How the Grouch Stole Christmas. And so we'll be traveling. uh, It's mostly on the West West Coast from Denver over, but that excludes the Northwest, the Southwest and, you know, the West Coast, the mountain region. So I'll be on that tour uh, from November all the way through the big day up until the new year. So you can check all that out. But if you go to the section called join, you'll see we have a caravan. That's where we are continuing the community that we've been building since the early days of me and Vastair and Idea and Blueprint and Slug and our crew in a tour van traveling across the country just like, yo, who wants to, who likes what we do? Who wants to be part of it? And if you support it, you're actually part of it. 
And so we did that at the merch table and in shows and in stores and all kind of stuff like that, ciphering, rapping. We actually would cipher with people after our shows and we got each other's emails and phone numbers and, and linked up. The way that we do that now is digitally. We still go out and do it at shows, but in the space with brotherly.com, in the caravan, the join section, we're building not only a, a library where we stream stuff that's just for the people that are really part of this. It's not meant for Spotify and YouTube and all that stuff. So there's a ever-growing collection of rare and exclusive music and videos and speeches and podcast content and all type of stuff. Um, I just thought of something really dope that people don't have that I'm going to find and upload there. And I'll tell you what it is next time. But all type of stuff that's not there. Also, you can do the Ask Me Anything episodes. And there are different tiers. And on the top tier, we actually have a Slack channel where we communicate with each other. We do meetups. Um, people actually really building community together, which is a beautiful thing. So go to brotherali.com. Check out the merch, check out the events, go to the join section, get down with this caravan. To hear artists build is a special thing because it, I think it allows people a window into like, what is that thing that's actually happening? Because mm -hmm. they might see the fact that some artists will have different levels of recognition. And amongst us, it's like, oh, that's that's great, you know. But amongst artists, we know that th that that experience, like you said, of, of a mother losing her child or the experience of exploring ourselves, like how terrifying it can be to really explore ourselves wow. and to admit to ourselves what's really inside there. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I think about the, the first line I heard from you is, my mother said, you sucked my pussy when you came out. Don't ever talk back. I handed your life and I hand it back. I'm a latchkey kid with a snotty nose, <laughs> high school dropout, space I'm around need. Why? It's like, man, to say something like that on a microphone, not to mention in, in New York in 2000, like that's a very different time. <laughs> it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's not the like, you can't get canceled. You just do people dirty and move on. Like nobody cancels you for it back then. You know what I'm saying? So like somebody, like <laughs> to say a word like that, it is like that's a that's a risky thing to even remember to acknowledge, and I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I, I, it 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 almost doesn't matter if that line actually was said, but it's like there's a feeling and like a truth and an energy to that. You know what I'm saying? That to be able to exp to 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 really look inside of ourselves, and then to say something like that in in public, and especially as a first line, it's like. You just set the standard, like, this is the type of truth we're talking about. Well, rest in peace to my mother. Mm. Uh, it's been three, it's been uh, three years now. Oh, man. Uh, she, she passed away uh, right as, right as COVID was starting to develop. Uh. She had an unforeseen, unforeseen stroke. Um, and uh, that line it gets more and more potent every year. Yeah. Um, I actually, I just performed it in Europe, in Estonia, um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was emotional. It's powerful. Um, and that's a real line. Mm. Um, for everybody that needs to know uh, the realness of growing up in New York, growing up black mm -hmm. and thinking you you going to talk back to your mother right. um so she had the uh, she humbled me in that moment um she uh you know it was a regular argument nothing crazy we just you know arguing i think i wanted to go out or something and she wanted me to come home at a certain time and it was a school night and all of that. Yeah. So I, so, you know, I'm tall, I'm bigger. I got all this responsibility. So I think you, I'm you, a, you, you smelling know, yourself a little bit. 
<laughs> smelling my soul. Yeah, you know I mean? A little smelling self fragrance. They smell it. Yeah. You know I mean? Little little fragrance. You know what I mean? So my mom was like, "Wait, wait, wait!" And boom, she literally said it like that. She said, "You sucked my pussy when you came out. Don't ever talk back to me." Then she proceeded to explain to me why I should have a curfew with you. And then she was like, have a good time, and I'll see you at, you know, yeah. 7, 8 o'clock, whatever, because it was a school night. Yeah. But, uh, and I was around, I was going on 16 at the time. Yeah. So I was 15, and I'm trying to flex and stay out all night. And I'm bigger too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She knows that. Yes. She knows that's dangerous. Yes. I'm gonna end up hanging with with older kids. She was like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, go out, go have fun." Yeah. But once that street light come on, you know, the street light come on by seven thirty. So you know the rule. Once the street light is on, she gotta be able to yell for you. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't be that far. Yeah. You know what I mean? She should be able to come down to the front of the building and be like, so rest in peace to my mom and for the fans, that's a real argument. And that's a real part of me that I left on a record. Yes. Of course I, of course we exaggerate things on record. Right. But there are things that are dead on on record also. So I just want to make that clear. And that on is me that you're such a great writer yourself that that's one of those lines that made you say something crazy. And I'm on it because that's what we do. Yeah. We make we make each other say something crazy. It's like Rakim does it, Nas does it, Jay Z does it. They say something, and it makes us all say something crazy. Ghostface does it every Tuesday, right? Okay, Ghostface will say something, and I'll just be like, "Oh my god!" So. <laughs> Shout out to Ghost. Oh yeah, he's the best. You see how you just said Ghostface is the best? Yeah. But you literally didn't mean he's the best MC. But you easily gave him that accolade mm-hmm. because of how he made you feel. So I'm bringing that up to say everybody can be the best Mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has that song or an album or a group of songs where they were just, you know, like there's a, you know what I'm, I know you know what I'm talking about because you make music. But for the person that just listens, trust me, for the person that's making it, y'all have to understand we are building and destroying inside of us. Mm -hmm. We're saying, no, I can't say that. I said that in two other songs. Right, 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 right. I'm saying I can't say that Ali, not only did I sing it in another song, but Ali said it a different way in his song. Mm -hmm. So we're always fighting to make the line the best, to make, shout out to all the producers that are fighting to make the drum go with this sample so it's going to inspire us. Because that beat is like a fire on us. Mm-hmm. And literally, and, and I know you know this too, when the beat is perfect, the rhyme just falls out. 
Yes. It's like it's like we're barely thinking. Right. It's just like it, it it this is why it's divine to me. This is not regular. It's not. Right. And when you get up when you get a brother Ali song, you're getting something unique. You're getting something beautiful. When you get a cannibal ox or a vast air song, you're getting something unique. And you just got to, like, uh, to use other great artists. Look how great Miles Davis is. Mm-hmm. Miles Davis. But is Miles Davis Al Jarreau? Hmm. See, that's the beauty of art. Right. As we- as much as you love Miles Davis, he's never going to be Al Jarreau. As much as you love Spider-Man, he can't be Batman. <laughs> I, I was wondering how long it was going to take for the comics to show up and how long it been. I haven't heard an Aikido, an Aikido bar yet, but I know Aikido is coming. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I know, the, I know the 120 coming. is coming. I know the comic books are coming, and I know the martial <laughs> arts are coming. <laughs> All of that is on its way. All of it, right now. You know, it's it's a Serious. trip when, when you know when you're talking. Just man, I didn't realize that your mother passed, man, and it's one of the things that oh. like we miss in each other's lives. You know what I mean? Because I actually wrote so, and then going back to being inspired by each other. There's a specific type. So like when you say that line, I saw this um, interview with um, with Denzel Washington and they were saying somebody was talking to him about Color Purple and like certain black movies. And he was saying um, they really should be directed by black directors. And they were talking to, to him about, well, why why a black director? And he's like, well, it's it's not necessarily just color it's culture. And he was saying that, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg did Schindler's List and Scorsese did Goodfellas, you know, or, or Francis Ford Coppola did uh, Godfather. Like, it's not that they're, they're all great directors and they could all do different things, but they understand a certain culture. So he was like, so if I say to a person um, to think about the sound and the smell, if I say like uh, a hot comb, touching hair on a on a Sunday morning. If you grew up with that, you know what that smells like, you know what it sounds like, you know like what that what maybe what that feels like. There's a cultural element of it there. So when you say that, it also reminds me of a similar um you know, Blueprint was telling me one time about that he was in a similar situation, just became becoming a teenager, and he had some friends over, and he said something kind of fly to his mom. And she, he said she just walked in the room and stole him in the face. And she, he was like, that wasn't even her way. But it was like, there's something being conveyed there. It's loving, and it's harsh, and it's and it's meant to grab attention because of the fact that, like, what you are going to face and what you're up against in this world is such that you can't, you know, you, you, you need to understand your place and you need to understand when you can be fly and when you have to be quiet for you to survive. Also, because of the way that this country has engineered our lives, like I have to also, I can't just be your nice, cool mom all the time. I also have to give you some tough love and you're bigger than me. And but once you turn 13 to the police, you're a man. Like a black person is a man. A black man is a full dangerous listen, man at 13 years old. All of those things. Listen, they don't, they don't, they don't get that everything you're saying is a hundred percent. They don't get that uh the thir- the black 13 year old yeah. that's damn near six feet. Right. Okay. I was five, ten. Right. At 13. Yeah, man. 
So and and, and, to, and, and to and to a to a person, especially to people who are of like, they got three hundred years of being deeply fearful of black men, and then you got some people that the that the city of New York gave them a weapon, and basically say if you kill somebody, you're probably just gonna go home. You might get a vacation, and then it's it, it's it's not funny in this sense. But it's crazy that I know like people who aren't black and don't live life with black people have no idea how old black people are. And it always makes me think about the black man is the original man. There's no there's no uh, there's no you know beginning date. There's no but even in a person so like my wife is in her 40s and she's a therapist. <laughs> Whenever she's talking to a client who's not black, they always think she's 20. <laughs> like she has to say things like my 23-year-old son so that so that those people will know, like, wait a minute, you're not twin. Like, people who aren't black have no idea how old or young black people are. It's a, it's amazing. No. no. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, that type of love. Uh, so it's true. like, so when somebody that's not from the culture might hear a line like that, it's just shock value. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. that's... Well, actually, you know, and to, to jump on that, and by the way, to reiterate what you're saying, my mother actually dated Denzel Washington. So Denzel broke that, he broke that whole science down in an interview one day on it's not a color thing. Right. It's an experience, it's 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 an experience thing because like you said, the smell, mm -hmm. the memory. Mm -hmm. The reason that we get the chills mm -hmm. when we repeat Rakim, mm -hmm. we're just repeating Rakim, but the chills, right. it's because of the memory we get thrown back into that moment. Yeah. Of, uh, and, and it's a real moment. And then the piggyback on the mothers, like you said, that's a mammal thing. You know, mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. are, are small, they're smaller than us. So men don't realize you're only bigger to protect her. Mm -hmm. You're not bigger to, to, to harm her. There it is. You're actually, you're bigger to protect her mm -hmm. and to honor her. Mm -hmm. So my mother and shout out to Blueprint. Um, my mother and his mother, in that moment, they had to remind us on the level of a mammal. Yeah. Our mothers, just like you said, you're a man out there in them streets. Mm -hmm. So if if you get loud in them streets, mm -hmm. they going to check you like, like a man. Right. So our mothers had to check us. And that taught me in Blueprint how to watch our mouth. Right. Because your mouth will get you in something that your booty cannot handle. And we're talking about the way that we inspire each other. Because then I think about like, okay, so my first album, Shadows in the Sun, is directly, like I said, related to the Blueprint and Cold Vein. That's the way I, see, that's the way I look at it. And I think about, so I have a song on that album where I talk about the struggles that I had with my mother. And one of the things that I think about, it's, it's, it's interesting too, we're talking about color and culture. And like color affects culture because we live in a race-based society. Like the society is race-based. So it's it's not color on its own, but it's like what's been done with Which color for hundreds of years. You know what I'm saying? And, and we think exactly. about like exactly. the, the thing about... Um, about when people who aren't necessarily from black culture that like, come into hip hop music and rock music, the people that are actually able to be accepted are people who also are able to find something in their own experience that's on that level of, of truth and vulnerability. You know what I mean? So like I, I look for like in, in white artists, I remember something um, artists saying about Eminem, like when Lord Jamar was saying white people are guests in the house of hip hop, which is a completely true statement. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, it's just the truth. It's true. Mm. And the truth, the truth hurts. Um, you know, um, it doesn't mean that 
um, you're not a, uh, you don't hold a place right. in the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say white people don't hold a place in rock and roll. And at the same time, you know damn well that you didn't create it. Right. The people who created rock and roll are the people that I had lunch with at South by Southwest. That's right. That's right. And and the generation Little before Richie. them whose names we don't even necessarily know. And people in, in West Africa playing the first ever guitar. And people before that speaking the first ever human language words. And people before that doing the first moan. And people before, like... <laughs> That's so real. That's so real. And that's how you got to look at it. Mm-hmm. You got to learn to look at it, um, you know, um, as it's it's always been a progression. Right. It's always been, you know, um, I mean, if you study reggae culture, the whole foundation of hip hop is right there. Mm-hmm. And then you realize who hurt is Jamaican. That's right. Yeah. Then you realize he was a dish jockey. Then you start putting it together. Oh, the 45s, the pedal, yeah. the mic. Yeah. And then you start putting together that they had a chanter. So the chanter predates the MC. Right. Yeah. And the and the dub, the dub plate is the break. And extending the break is like what they're doing when they made the dub. And extending the break was for the dancer. Right. It, it wasn't for nobody to be yapping. Mm. You was dancing. You was up rocking. Mm-hmm. That's why the DJ was looping the record. He was not looping the record for us to talk crap. That's an extension of it. Mm-hmm. Then it became, oh, we could throw the dozens on the mic. Right. So now we can make fun of each other on the playground, in the backyard, in the staircase. We're making fun of each other. If you don't laugh, you'll go crazy. Right. Some of the greatest comedians were in the Holocaust, man. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Some of the greatest comedians were in the transatlantic slave trade. Yes, sir. Because if you don't know how to laugh, you are going to go crazy. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's that's why the cold vein, just when you're ready to cry, we make you smile. Yeah. So if you do drop a tear, you smile with it. Right. Because no matter how gray that album got, we always told you there was a silver lining. Yes, yeah. And th- and there's a lot of joy and there's a lot of comedy and there's a lot of, yeah. Look at good times. Mm, mm, mm. They're poor. They're in Chicago. Look at the lyrics of the song. They're barely making it. But this is good times? Right. So that's the story of us. Right. That's the story of the original people. Mm-hmm. We're always going through trials and it's a test. Mm-hmm. That's how you know you're worthy. Yes, sir. You don't wake up with the championship. You got to go through the playoffs. Mm. Then you got to go through the finals. You thought the playoffs was hard. <laughs> and that's what makes a champion. So when you say the word greatest, you're saying two words, great test. How are you going to be the greatest and no one tested you? Mm. So that's why we're so prideful. Because our whole life is a test, especially I'm just talking for anybody, but especially for Aboriginal people. Yes, sir. Because when we do something wrong, we knew it was wrong. So it's a super test on us. 
other people do stuff wrong. I don't know if they knew it was wrong. <laughs> See, it's different. Go back to Rakim. They were lost. Right. They were in Cain. Yeah. I don't know if they know if it's right or not. Only 10% of them know if it's right or not. Mm -hmm. The other the other 85% of them don't know if it's right or not. So I can't judge them. I can judge people who know though. Right. So that's that's us. That's you know. So that's why that's why we have such a swag mm -hmm. when we get something done. Right, right, right. <laughs> You know, you ever see the black man get something done? <laughs> There's a swag. Yes. There's a swag to it. Yeah, man. You know, the white man will do it, and it, it, you know, it was done, and he acknowledged he did it, but he doesn't swag out <laughs> like the black man. He swag out Go because ahead. we know that. We know that that definition of soul, it lands on us. So when I'm, um, we're going to have a moment right now. Look at that girl. I forget her name. Pardon me. But the girl that's winning all the races right now. Mm -hmm. What's her name? You know her name? I know who you're talking about. You're talking about Shikari? Shikari. Now look at Shikari. Look how she's the rebirth of Jackie. Uh -huh. Yes. She she got the nails. Yes, sir. She ab she's aboriginal, and she stays smiling. I'm like, this is Jackie Joyner reborn. Mm -hmm. So so it scares you when you see LeBron and Kobe. And we're like, oh, my God, that's Jordan again. Mm -hmm. It never ends with us. Yes, sir. That's right. It never ends. That's what people don't get. We the people that came with the sun and the moon. Yes, sir. It never ends. Mm -hmm. It never. We were here when there wasn't a moon. How about that? We saw the moon get made. We saw that destruction and had to rebuild from it, from Mecca and Now Valley. How about that? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I keep talking about therapy and a lot of people keep talking about therapy. And I remember when people were talking to me about therapy, I remember being happy that some of my crazy friends were in therapy, but for whatever reason, it took me a long time to actually go out on my own journey of therapy. And I had all kinds of misconceptions about it. I had all kinds of fears about it. And what I didn't realize until I really got into the process was that I was actually holding on to something that felt like it was protecting me and keeping me safe. And when we go through crazy things in our lives, and it doesn't have to be the most crazy thing you can imagine. It doesn't have to be, you know, that your parents are killed in front of you. Although we, I know people that that is their reality. Um, it doesn't have to be that, you know, it could be whatever is the thing in your life that felt like a break from the good, healthy, happy, safe reality that we came to trust or that we hoped we could trust. And maybe it just wasn't as safe as we wanted it to be. And maybe our hearts and our souls and our development didn't get the things that we needed on any kind of level. A lot of times we develop these ways of just making it through and surviving those moments. And that's an important thing. That's a good thing. But until we get the chance to really process that stuff and metabolize it, we hold on to 
the 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 posture and the feeling in our body and the tenseness and the alertness and the vigilance that we had to survive that moment and we start taking it into other moments of life we start taking that emergency response into our day-to-day lives and so it doesn't allow us to really arrive and be present with ourselves and with others in the moments that we are actually having so it can rob us of the other parts of our lives. It can rob us of the beautiful moments in our lives. It can create all types of, of stress and fatigue and you know, aging, and it can create real problems for us. But we hold on to it. I was holding on to that stuff because it kept me alive in moments when I needed it. And so I didn't want to challenge it. And I, I didn't know what was on the other end of it. Part of it is just the unknown. Like, I didn't know, what if, what if I actually process and metabolize this stuff? What if I stop responding with fear and anger? What if I stop just bouncing from a situation? If, if, I, if I feel like I love somebody and they love me and then something happens that challenges that? What if I actually sit with myself and sit with them and communicate with them better? What if I actually examine what they did or and said and why they did it and why I responded the way that I did instead of just bouncing, which has been my way, you know? So I get it. I understand why therapy feels scary, why it feels unnecessary, why it feels weird, why it feels like it's for other people. I understand that. But I wouldn't be your brother if I didn't say that I took the chance and stepped into it and I'm so happy that I did and you want for your friends and your family and what you want for yourself. And so I want that for people. And I used BetterHelp to do it. We reached out to BetterHelp and said like, hey, can we partner with you and help people become aware of your service on our podcast? And they said, yes. So they created the link betterhelp.com, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash travelers. You go there and then you get a discount on your first month of service. And then we also get a commission to help the work that we do here so we can keep spreading the word. I couldn't recommend it more highly. Betterhelp.com slash travelers. We are the original Khalifas. Mm-hmm. We are the original people that had the wisdom to be Khalifa. Yes. Wiz Khalifa? Uh-huh. So now when you look at the name Wiz Khalifa, you got to think again. Because that's a clue to who we always were. Mm -hmm. The nigga with attitude. That attitude is that swag. But look who Ice Cube is. Right, yes. Look who ran Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Look who EVE is. These are powerful men. Look at the power of Dre. So you just can't say niggas with attitude and it just goes off your mouth. There's a power that comes behind that. Mm -hmm. There's a power when you say underground king. Mm-hmm. There's a force because everything was done with sound. Yeah. Everything was done with sound. That's why we love music so much. Mm-hmm. Our law said become, be, and everything became yes, in its own time. Yes, sir. That's right. So the vocal is in is powerful. Time, the Egyptian god, time. He said, me, and everything became. The Indian God said, me. The South American God said, me. This is why it's always on us, the people that made hip hop, Mm -hmm. the Aboriginal. Yes, sir. Yeah. The same. The, the same people that made all those systems that I just brought up, all of these totems that are on my body, it's linking you back to an old truth of us. These are old totems. 
of oneness and uniqueness and the beginnings of something and light and darkness and silence and sound, all of this is, is united. So who is the better musician than God? Mm -hmm. Who is the better if you hold in a note when God held a note, a planet became. Mm -hmm. You love when Mariah Carey holds a note. When God, subhanahu wa ta held a note, a universe became. Mm -hmm. So the sound is so important. And it is the sound that gave us sight. Sound is very mystical. Mm -hmm. Don't ever second guess sound. Mm -hmm. Because sound is connected to consciousness. If God said be, that means he thought be. So in order to say something, and I'm saying something right now at this very exact moment, look how fast it is. In order for me to say something, it has to be faster than the speed of light. So I'm actually proving to you that my thoughts are faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. That's why we love freestyling. Right. <laughs> That's why we love freestyling. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm drawing it up immediately. It has to make sense, and I got to stay on time and on beat. Mm -hmm. That's a divine science, y'all, and you don't even see it. So until you connect consciousness with yourself, right. and then realize that you are a relative consciousness, right. that there's an ultimate consciousness yes. that you're connected to. Yes. Once you get that gem, mm -hmm. then you're going to learn to focus and zero in with the relative consciousness that you have now. And that's when they become one. This is why Isa or Westerners will say Jesus. This is why Jesus said, I and the Father are one. There is no separation. Mm. Once you're operating on the level of consciousness mm -hmm. because you can operate on a mundane level that makes you a robot to your body mm -hmm. at that point right 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 that makes you a robot to your flesh level consciousness yeah i'm tired i'm sleepy i'm hungry my name is theo my name is Ali. This is our nuts, our flesh. Right. But there's a part of us that's greater than all of that. Yes, sir. And once you learn to tune into that, yes, great thing, great, great phenomenal things will happen in music, in life, in relationships. Great things will happen. My God, man, I, uh, this has to be part one. <laughs> of course, like, like we should just have a podcast together. Like we should just this should be like a weekly thing. It's just I'm down. Like we just we just kick it, and just do it. I'm totally down because I think certain things need to be addressed. Yeah, man. Uh, a, a a lot of things that we spoke about in this could be a. There are certain sections that could be an hour alone. Absolutely. So, you know, that's the beauty of knowledge. Yeah. That's the beauty of, of, of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yeah. And when you were talking about freestyling and the, the way that a person is in their physical shell, but channeling something far beyond that. Yeah. I, was, I, I just kept thinking like knowledge born. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just thinking about knowledge born. Knowledge born. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now we're touching on the Supreme Mass. Mm -hmm. um, which was developed by 
the almighty Fonka said um, in New York City in the 1960s, the Supreme Mass um, is beautiful because, as you said, knowledge being one, it leads you, and one is, is the original uh, expression of a number. Mm-hmm. Zero is actually all of them together. Mm-hmm. So the cipher one to nine, yeah, one to nine is actually zero. Yeah, oh yeah. So the zero is made by the existence of one to nine, but the zero is acknowledged because of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's beautiful. Uh, one is knowledge or act knowledge. Acting mm-hmm. on knowledge, act knowledge, and nine is born to bring into existence mm-hmm. birth, stages, you know, metamorphosis. Mm-hmm. So, knowledge born is such a beautiful statement, yeah. And that's what the and that's what the Khalifa is, because the Khalifa is the representative of the Most High that's that's born into the that's born into into being. You know what I'm saying? That's the into representative the sensible and, reality. Yeah. And the yes. and the Khalifa is finite. Like the Khalifa, the individual, the person is finite. So we have a, a born date, a death date in in that sense. Yes. But we're expressions of the divine. Yes. So knowledge being born into that sense. So we are like God, although God is not like us. In the sense that Allah is not limited, yes. Allah is not finite. So us in these shells are finite and limited, but all of but we're borrowing our existence from the from the one. So one is nine, and knowledge exactly. is born, and that, and you know what I'm saying. I like to say uh, creation mm. is reflective existence. Yes. Uh, uh, manifestation. Yeah. So man, I fess. Mm. Personification, mm-hmm. person, or emanation, mm-hmm. e-man, man. So man is in all of those words. Mm-hmm. Personify, emanate. So you are correct. Adam represents the emanation of the supreme. Mm-hmm. Because the Supreme will never know itself if there's no Adam. It'll never know itself. In order to have knowledge of itself, it had to self-reflect. It had to actually redact itself. So the fish will never know it's in the bowl if it doesn't have the power of redacting. Mm-hmm. That's why there are certain hadiths that said, I was a hidden treasure. And I love to be known. And I I wanted to be known. Yeah. I, 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 I yearn. Yeah. I yearn. I love to I be known. I desired. Yeah, I love. I love. I love. I love. Like, I love to be known. Yeah, so the discovery... And we we just I was just talking with somebody recently. Yasin Bey was saying like, so much beauty we forget to be reminded. You know what I'm saying? Like the be- like we forget it so that we can be reminded. You think of like why does the human being forget Allah? Like why why did Allah create like create a human being that forgets God and then remembers? Because then that that remembering is a rediscovery. You know what I mean? So it's like the I, I, I was a hidden treasure. I love to be known. So like even for the believer or even for the person that that is is doing the knowledge, there will be a moment of of like heedlessness and forgetfulness, and then knowledge is born again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like the the treasure becomes hidden again and then known again. Creation had an aha moment. Right. That's why it made creation. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. For the discovery. You're at. You're at perfect oneness. Mm-hmm. You need nothing. Mm-hmm. Everything is perfect. You need nothing. Yeah. You have no dependency. At a certain point, that gets bored. That gets boring. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. And this is also <laughs> how I prove. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> 
I'm on another level. So like, and this is, and this is also, and this is, this is also, um, how I explain to my brothers, right? Um, about the realities of heaven and hell, mm. and how many layers there are of them, mm-hmm. and how they were, they will pass away. Mm-hmm. See, the only thing that's eternal is our law. Yes, sir. So, unless you go back to him, you're going to be playing a game, Mm -hmm. peddling stories. Mm -hmm. Peddling stories. You're a a peddler. You're a bike peddler. You're a hamster. Uh. Now the the Buddhists know what I'm talking about now. Right, 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 right. Now all of the, every Buddhist just looked up right now. See, you're a hamster. Oh. So now the Buddhist needs to know he's a Muslim. You ain't know that? Mm. You just an old Muslim. Sit down and be quiet. <laughs> we got the same lessons. Mm. When you rip them apart. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you rip them apart. Mm-hmm. So understand that. Mm-hmm. We're just peddling a story mm-hmm. until you go through an a, a experience. Me and Ali have gone through experiences. Our teachers have gone through experiences. Right, right, right. It's 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 different with us. You can't take us off of our understanding. Right. Yeah, because it's not just memorized. We memorized it, but but then uh, like there was memory. There was like we memorized the the one twenty. We memorized the Quran. What did you just say? Mm. What did you just say ten minutes ago? Hmm. We forget. Right. And sometimes that forgetting is a, is on a spiritual level. Yeah. But it's not a negative thing. Right. You need you need to let go. Yes. You need to let go. Yeah. Yeah. There, 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 there can be a great mercy in forgetting. But by letting go, you will remember. Because whenever something happens, just like when Ali goes, oh, that's like when me and Vass was on tour. Mm -hmm. See, when something happens, it'll always bring you back to the Rakim chills. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. I was just building with my brother. Uh, Shout out to my man, Shark, uh, Raised by Wolves. I was just building with him. And he's always, you know, doing his duties. He's a he's a wise brother. You know, he's always at the masjid. And we be building. And I share some of my esoteric understandings with him. And he shares his understanding. And he's just like, you know, you know, um, hypothetically, he's like, when will it ever end? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like. That's what you don't, that's what we don't get on this level. Right. On this level, it's hard for us to understand infinity. Right. Because our experience is finite. Our experience is 120 years. Mm-hmm. And if you eat McDonald's, you might make it to 75. All right. And if you're blessed, you're going to make it to 85 and better. So, you know, our, our, there's a turtle that's been here for 200 years. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a, um, a tree. There's a tree outside right now that's been here for 500 years. Mm. So we have no understanding of eternity or infinity, not a proper understanding of it on this level. Yeah. Only in a meditative sense, and few of us can get to that level of meditation. That's why we need Yoda in our life. Right. That's. That's why we all need a Mr. Miyagi yeah. in our life. Yes. A sheikh, a guru, because a civilizer, uh, like somebody, yeah, somebody to somebody to guide us. 
the wisest of all of us, we've all had a guy. Mm -hmm. So you need a guy, you yeah. know. Yeah. And guy and gu guides, you know, you can respect the guy to the utmost. But in the end, it has to become your story. That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah. It has to become it ha it has to become your understanding. Yes. Or you're just peddling Joey's story. You're right. You're just quoting and imitating. You become a mimic instead so, of a, a, an and echo so, instead of a voice. That was perfectly said. So at some point, Daniel Sun has to not only master what Miyagi gave him. Right. But he has to be wise enough to transmit it to the next generation and even import his understanding to the next generation. And this is how it works. Right. Yeah. And that's how it be that's how it gets renewed. Because me and you, we were watching those MCs so hard. Mm -hmm. That we were able to mimic them. Right. I sat here and watched you spit my rhymes like you wrote them. <laughs> You're mimicking me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you just showed and proved that you're not gaslighting. Mm. You just showed and proved, yo, this is my homie. I ain't seen him in a while. You start spitting my verses and start explaining what songs it inspired in your catalog. Mm -hmm. That's truth. Mm -hmm. That's showing and proving, and that's truth. Right. A person could have lied. Oh, yeah, yeah. He could have just said, I like Iron Galaxy right. and left it at that. Right. But you have to go into the intricate line. A person can say, I like the Bible, then they can sit with you and talk about the book of Jude. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Right. A person can say, I love the Quran, and then they can actually go, how did you feel about this chapter? You see? So that's a difference. So you just exposed that you really know what you're talking about. You're not just up here yapping. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're in a world of yappies. Everybody yaps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. And you get rewarded for it. You can learn about God from Brother Ali and Vishnu Allah, a.k.a. Vast Air, or you could learn about God from the 700 Club. <laughs> everybody's yapping uh -huh. everybody's yapping but some of our yak is gonna survive uh. that's why I tell people if I tell you something to go throw it up against a rock mm. see if it survives mm. you know that's that diamond the diamond yap that golden yap it's that golden diamond yet. It's going to be hard to, to, you know what I mean? Mm. When something is brittle, like let's take it back to the um, the three pigs. <laughs> right, 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 right. Let's take it back to the three pigs. You have straw, you have twigs, and then you have brick. Obviously, brick is the most dense. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the strongest house. So that's how you got to look at life. You got to look at the density of things. If I said something that's something weird today... Are you talking about looking at the today, density of a brick house right now, brother? <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at the density, the density of, of a brick house. You know, <laughs> yes, sir. Of... of, of of any situation, you mm. know what I mean? Mm. Because uh, uh, when you bring up density for a metaphor, you could be bringing up matter mm -hmm. for, a, for a metaphor. Mm -hmm. And the more dense, the more coarse, and the more gross, 
But, um, you know, like we said earlier, Allah is Batin, Allah is Zaire. Mm -hmm. So Allah is unseen and manifested. So if Allah is manifested and then Allah says, I'm nearer to you than your juggler game, right. it's pretty self evident where Allah is. Yeah. You know? Allah can only be found in the heart. So, man, you know, we, we like I, we have to schedule the next the next one. Like, not just say we're gonna do it again, but this uh this building I'm in, they set an alarm that's gonna be set. So if I leave after a minute, I'm gonna set this alarm off. So I'm have to. I'm have okay, to, I hear you. I'm have to get to boogie pretty soon. But 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 man. You know, one of the things that I love is like so many people obviously ask and like talk about, well, what is it what the, with this bond between, you know, Islam and the five percenters and hip hop? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things, one of the many things that people get is like these are the conversations and, and this is the type of like building and reflecting and, you know, the type of examining the meaning behind things that happens between people who have this this language, you know what I mean, to to explore with. They have these like this same roadmaps, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, I think it becomes really, it's one of the things that I think people could really see is like why why do the why do the great MCs all have many of them have this con this connection? You know what I mean? I know, I know. Thing. It is, it is, it is a beautiful thing. Um I think it traces back to what we said earlier. Yeah. Everybody is a peer. Everybody's a peer. Everybody respects each other and they're looking in on each other. Mm -hmm. And to be real, and to be real, hip hop was made in New York. And New York was one of the largest centers yeah. for, for, I would say, the information of Master Farad and Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. So that was very important at the time. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Father Allah, also known as Clarence, the 13th of X, he was very close with Malcolm X. Right. So, that, so that's the era mm -hmm. that he came out of. Mm -hmm. And if you're fortunate enough to listen to him talk, he talks like the hip hop world Absolutely. is about to talk. Yeah. It's yes. so beautiful yeah. to hear how you see, like if you ever heard old New York gangs mm -hmm. talk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll, it'll be like, wow, that's hip hop. Yeah. Hip hop came out of New York gang culture, y'all. Mm -hmm. And it was a way for us to actually be better than the game. Mm -hmm. It was a way for us to be like, what's the best way to say this? Like it was the truth of the game right. to be real. Yeah. So it's it's oxymoronic that we're dying at the hip hop function now. Right. Because the hip hop function, it stopped us from killing ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like we would dance it out instead of stabbing each other. Yes. And to and to piggyback this idea, go to beat it. Go to Michael Jackson's beat it. Mm -hmm. Instead of stabbing each other. They're dancing. That's right. That is hip hop. So it amazes me that now we're dying in the flow. Yeah. And you know, that that competition, that artistic competition, even though it's people, it's artists going at each other, it the competition in and of itself elevates the entire culture. So, so even the competitive of spirit of it still elevates the entire community. Like the whole, the whole culture gets elevated of because course. of that, that competition. Of course, steel, steel, sharp and steel, mm -hmm. steel, sharp and steel. Uh, the MMA, 
which is a sport, um, but it's closer to a real fight. Mm -hmm. The MMA, the MMA showed everything that's more sport like that you're not gonna be ready for a fight. A fight has this element in it. And if you don't have at least this amount of element in it, this is where, because I love judo and karate and Aikido. I love all of those arts. I love Bushido. But years ago, I used to tell people, if you're not sparring, yeah. then you don't understand how the human body really moves. You only know an application right. that you're not going to know how to apply. You're peddling stories. You're peddling stories until you get punched in the mouth. That's right. <laughs> that's the. It's, it's not a that's, story that's anymore. The only, it's tasting. You it's, taste. You taste your blood. Taste, you're, until you swallow your blood right. and get a bottom tooth a little shaking a little bit. That's right. Then you're really gonna dodge a punch. That's right. That's right. That's right. You you you're never gonna dodge a punch when it stops here all the time, and then the person has a second to think and do this elaborate special move. Mm -hmm. That's bunkai. That was designed so people can learn the move. That's not fighting, right? That's not how it's gonna get done in a split second. So you have two people in martial arts. Mm. The person that's peddling stories uh -huh. and the person that actually was in the army, was in combat, was a policeman, was a bouncer, and actually had to deal with hundreds of people that are aggressive and they're on alcohol. So they don't feel pain. Right. You got to be battle tested. Those are the people that I want to learn fighting right. from. Right. Yeah. Yes. But you're learning fighting from a guy that's he's constantly doing philosophy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So sir. you can't equate the two. Right. Man. I I I have to, I gotta I gotta wrap it because I gotta I gotta move. But man, I love you, brother. We gotta do part two, three, part four, three, part five, number one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> I love you, brother. I'm so happy to see you, man. And and I we need you, brother. We need you on the new record. It's laid out. We waiting for you. I got you. I'm there. We waiting. You got plenty of time because we're putting out another album before this. Okay. So you got plenty of time. There it is. Because I, I know you're busy. I know your schedule is crazy. But this is long overdue. I'm about to get five drinks done with you like now. Let's do it. You know what I mean? God bless you. God bless your family. You, God bless you, the brother. team. I'm glad you good. I'm glad you safe. And now I know that we could do it on my phone. We straight. Yo, yo, I got you, brother. I'm here. Let's set this up and do this again. I'm serious. Yes, sir. Yeah, within the next calendar. They're gonna month, love we'll... this. Yeah. They gonna, they gonna, the fans are gonna love this, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm telling you, B. People don't get to hear very often what the build is. And then when we get on podcasts, a lot of times we, t we do tea and we do gossip and we do controversial whatever. But to, to hear how, what the build really is, that's something that people don't get to hear very often. That's real. That's real. I'm so glad we caught up, brother. All right, brother. Holla at me. Yes, sir. Peace, peace. Peace and love.
Special thanks and much love to my man, Vast Eric. You know, it, it, this really reminds me of being on tour with your, with your friends. Like if I catch Ant on tour, we are going to talk and talk and talk, and there will be no end until some external thing forces us to end. And it's usually the travel part. It's usually like, yo, if I don't get an Uber and go to the airport right now, I'm going to miss my flight. I love you. I can't wait to talk to you again because you you pick right up where you left off and you don't want to leave because there's certain types of, as Vass said, yap. There's certain types of golden yap, diamond yap that you can only have with certain people. And it it almost requires some sort of thing to like, okay, if we have to stop now, I'm so sorry. And that's happened a couple of times on the podcast. But I got many nights of sitting up and talking with Merce and uh, you know, talking with Yasin Bey and talking with uh, Slug and talking with Ant and talking with BK and talking. And it's like, dude, if I don't get up and leave right now, I'm going to have consequences in my life. So the building that I record my podcast in, there's an alarm that automatically sets at a certain time at midnight. And if I'm still in the building and I leave, then that alarm goes off and it wakes up the people in the neighborhood. And I just feel bad about that. And I'm always worried because I'm an immigrant, that the police are going to come and that they're going to revoke my residency and my whole family is going to have to leave. But in any case, we had to stop. So much love and special thanks to my dear brother, Vast Air, for being so generous with himself and his time and his wisdom. I mean, it's very special. I hope that, I hope that you made it to this point and I hope that you feel the way that I feel about these just beautiful, wise human beings and what they have to teach us and offer us and what it means to be in community and be in conversation, be in, in relationship, you know, in brotherhood with these people. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, we're brought to you by the Zakat Foundation. Go check them out and put something on something. Put something on something. Zakat to us on social media, zakat.org. Do do that, do do that, do do that, that, that. Uh, go to brotherali.com and check out the merch and check out the events. And also you can see I there's little write-ups, there's little blurbs for everything in my in my catalog. All of the pod, all the songs and all the albums and all the projects and all that stuff. You can get a little insight, a little background on all of those things. Uh, me and BK put a lot of work into building that site, and you may find things there that you like. But specifically, if you go to the join section, brotherali.com slash join, or go to brotherali.com and hit join, uh, you can get down with the caravan and you can become part of this movement, you know, for independent voices that are trying to reflect and explore and find and extract and then express and share the beauty of it all, the meaning of it all. We don't only have to bond over anger and fear and judgment. We can bond over something that's profound and something that's beautiful and something that's loving and something that is a build. So thank you for building with us. And we say peace and we leave you with goodness. And inshallah, we'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.